I'm going to tell you this, and you can tell all your little friends. This is a delicate piece of machinery. You don't just shove paper in it. You don't bang on the buttons. You don't sit on the glass. If you want it to work, you have to treat it with respect. What do you want? I need to speak with you. Honey, I have a 6.30 dinner reservation, and unless you want to pull me there in a rickshaw, I have to get going. Well, um, I'm a copywriter. Why, did I call you something else? No. I don't know if you're aware, but I brought in the Popsicle account today. On my own. Hey, Ginger, did you hear about this? I've got to go. Wait. I need my own office. It's hard to do business and be credible when I'm sharing with the Xerox machine. Freddie Rumson's office has been vacant for some time. I think I should have it. It's yours. Really? You young women are very aggressive. Oh, I didn't mean to be impolite. No, it's cute. There are 30 men out there who didn't have the balls to ask me. Oh, there you are. Mr. Sterling, Miss Wilson, this is my fiancé, Dr. Greg Harris. Well, Rachel moving to another country, not being able to see her every day? How, how could I be okay with this? I know, but what are we going to do? She really needs this job. Do you think if, uh, if the Ralph Lauren people offered her her old job back, she would take it? Well, how is that going to happen? Is this the best way to use one of your three magic wishes? <laughs> like, I don't know, I could talk to her boss. Yeah, I, I met him at that Christmas party. I mean, we, we really hit it off. You mean the guy who kept calling you Ron? I didn't say we were brothers. <laughs> May I help you? Yeah, I'm a friend of Rachel Green's. Um, actually, we, we met at the Christmas party about two years ago. Oh, right. Uh, Don? Close. Ron. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you? Um, well, I'm here to see if, if uh, you'll give Rachel her job back. Ah, did she uh, ask you to come here and do this? Oh, no. Uh, first, I have to get you to agree. Then we'll see if she wants to come back. <laughs> wow, that is tempting. Look, she loved her job here. Now, let's face it, you're not going to find anyone who did it as well as she did. Isn't that true? She is good. Oh, I took a shot there. <laughs> but I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Oh, that's not true. There's, there's nothing I want to do. <laughs> I see. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Is this your son? Yeah, his name is Ross. <laughs> what? Uh, nothing. It's just it's uh, it's close to Ron. <laughs> does he um? Does little Ross like dinosaurs by any chance? Yeah, they're all he talks about. Why? How would he like to come with me to the Museum of Natural History after everyone else has left, just the two of us, and and he can touch anything he wants? <laughs> I just heard it how you must have heard it, and that's not good. Um, let me start again. I'm a paleontologist. Uh, you'll be there with us, and the touching refers only to bones, fossils. You could really arrange that? You let Rachel come back, and it's done. Well, I guess having Rachel back wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, yes! Oh, thank you. This is great. Thank you so much. And I swear, your, your kid's gonna have the time of his life. Uh, that's great. And worry about little Ross. He's, he's always reading, he's collecting rocks, and he's obsessed with dinosaurs. He'll be fine. <laughs> Bye. Hi. You said you wanted to see me? Yes, I did. You're Harry Crane, right? Yes, I am. Certain things have come to my attention. Oh, no. I heard about it third hand, and I thought it sounded reckless, so I talked to Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper knows about this? I think someone told on you, and it backfired. Mitch. Doesn't matter. Cooper thought it showed initiative. So, you're in here now. I'm smiling. What do you want? Uh, well, <clears throat> I guess, uh, for one thing, 
I think that we should have a television department. All the other agencies have them. And I think I should run it. You are now the head of the television department, which is comprised solely of you. Anything else? Well, actually, um, <clears throat> I think I deserve a raise. And I think you've already received a sizable reward. Let's not get greedy. I'm not being greedy. Are you arguing with me? How much do you make? $200 a week, plus drinks. Give me a number. Uh, how about 310? <laughs> no one makes that around here, not even close. How about two and a quarter? Say yes. Yes. I'll throw in new business cards. You drive a hell of a bargain. I'm gonna help you boys. I'm Gary Bertier. The only All-American you've got on this team. You want any of us to play for you? You reserve half the open positions for Hammond players. Half the offense, half the special teams. We don't need any of your people on defense. We're already set. Uh-huh. Don't need none of my people. Mm-hmm. What do you say your name was, uh, Jerry? Gary. No, you must have said Jerry, like Lewis, which would make you Dean Martin, right? Ladies and gentlemen, got an announcement to make. We got Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin going to camp with us here this year. Jerry tells the jokes, Dean sings the songs, and gets the girl. Let's give him a round of applause. Where's your folks, Gary? Parents, are they here? Where are they? That's my mother. That's your mama? Mm-hmm. Very nice, I want you. Take a good look at her. Because once you get on that bus, you ain't got no mama no more. You got your brothers on the team, and you got your daddy. Now, you know who your daddy is, don't you? Gary, if you want to play on this football team, you answer me when I ask you, who is your daddy? Who's your daddy, Gary? Who's your daddy? You. Uh-huh. And whose team is this? Is this your team? Or is this your daddy's team? Yours. Mm-hmm. Get on the bus. Put your jacket on first. And get on the bus. Uh, Dean? Fix that tie, son. D uh, don't, uh, don't try to bait me, Miles. Now, if you have a proposal to make, let's hear it. Well, at this point, my client is still prepared to consider reconciliation. My client's ruled that out. My client is prepared to entertain an amicable disillusion of the marriage without prejudice. That's a fart in a stiff wind. My client proposes a 30-day cooling-off period. My client feels sufficiently dispassionate. My client asks that you not initiate proceedings pending his setting certain affairs in order. <laughs> well, what's so goddamn funny? Please, let me handle this. All right, so much for the icebreakers. What are you after, Freddy? My client is prepared to settle for 50% of the marital assets. <clears throat> why only 50, Freddy? Why not 100? While we're dreaming, why not 150? Are you familiar with Kirshner? Kirshner does not apply. Bring this to trial. We'll see if Kirshner applies. What's Kirshner? Please, let me handle this. Kirshner was in Kentucky. Kirshner was in Kentucky? Kirshner was in Kentucky. All right, Freddie, forget Kirshner. What's your bottom line? Primary residence, 30% of remaining assets. What are you, nuts? Have you forgotten Kirshner? Freddie, it's a negotiation. See you at the preliminary. Freddie, we're all friends here. It's a negotiation. <laughs> Hey, uh, ready? Fine. We'll eat the pastry. I'm just saying, telling the truth is not in the cards right now. I thought I thought you'd be excited to have an acting job. If it's an acting job, we should get paid. Yeah, you're gonna get paid in experience. I want to actually get paid. <laughs> All right, what do you want? Six hundred dollars for the day, plus overtime if we go over eight hours. I'll do my own hair and makeup. And I want you to pay for the six-week intensive acting camp that my mom can't afford. 
$50 for the day and a two-week acting class at the YMCA nearest you. $500 and a four-week acting class. $300 and a three-week class. Done. I would have done it for $500. I would have done it for the experience.